So Matthias Wandel put out a video about flush cutting with a router bit and I posted a comment, recess the cutter and I bet you could make spheres. He replied, actually no, because once the sphere gets too small at a place, it just wants to cut more and more away. And I thought that didn't make sense because once you get to a certain depth of cut, the router base itself being a circle will limit your cut. So the whole premise of what I'm talking about here is Say you want to cut a sphere, and this is a 2D representation of the router base here. And your router bit is there. So anything that's not a circle, say you have a little bit of a rise here, or rise here, gets cut away by the router bit. This can be used to cut a sphere. In this case, if you wanted a smaller diameter than this one, and your router base is the same distance apart, then your router bit is retracted a little bit further up into the base. The further the router bit is retracted, the smaller diameter circle or sphere you're gonna make. To router this sort of shape, if you wanted to do a full 360 degree sphere, it'd be a good idea to mount it to the ground with a single post of some sort, probably threaded in with some threads of some sort. And you'd probably have to do this in three or four different locations around the circle or sphere so you can router multiple sides at a time. My theory extends a little bit further that you are not able to do a concave surface like this with the router bit extending to the bottom there. First you would need a round nose router bit and anytime the router base encounters some sort of bump, that would lift the bit here, which is the opposite of what you want. So my theory is that this would not be feasible. Now, Izzy Swan did make a jig that allowed the entire router to gimbal in multiple axes to do a concave surface. Okay, that seemed to work really good. Um, this is supposed to be a prototype, but since it works so good, I'm gonna stop here. Uh, also, the kid's probably going to, down for a nap right now. And this looks pretty spherical to me. Um, I mean, it's probably not a true sphere because as it gets down to these edges, it's not like a, a circle, you could say. Because when you get down into the flat part here, then that's misrepresentation of a circle between the router bit and the edge. Um, also, my base here, it has two divot areas that are not like a circle, um, and this is the only base I have for this. So that 
that makes it seem a little bit rough in spots. I'll bring the camera closer so you can see it in a little bit here. Let's unplug this for safety. I used a normal router bit that has no center. That doesn't really matter in this case because the arc goes into that middle point anyways. It might actually be better because you're having most of your cutting being done at a radius other than zero. Because if it was a cutter that went all the way to the middle, all your cutting would be at the tip of the radius in the middle. I had to adjust the depth only three times. I adjusted it once to get the knock the corners off and then second time to kind of rough out the round and then the third time to get it at the right depth and I got really lucky because it was a really close depth but it was going a little bit too deep. I had to decrease the aggressiveness of the cutter so I had to move the base out away from the bit and that allowed it to smooth it out. It seemed to, before I moved to the base out, it was cutting and cutting. It just kept cutting the whole way down so it would just keep going down because the radius it was trying to cut was too small for this size of log. This is a six by six. It's actually, I think, it's actually five and a half square. And that took me, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes to do. So that's pretty fast. And this is not a beefy router. This is uh, just a Ryobi, like 1.75 horsepower unit. I figured, I think this is a half inch bit. And I had to use the, the shortest bit I have. Like I have an inch bit, but this is only a half inch long bit. Uh, because it, anything longer and it would stick out into the base too far. So when I first started I had the base extended all the way and it was still taking a very aggressive cut. You can see there it's not very long. Also all the vibrations and movement made my adjuster wheel come off but the screw's still in there so that's good. I had set the fan up here because it was blowing a lot of chips but I really had to put the the guard in to keep the chips from blowing at me and I got out some bigger safety glasses that have a little better protection and you definitely want to use earmuffs too because this is a, a loud operation. Also dust is everywhere so do it somewhere where you don't care about dust getting everywhere. This sphere has a diameter that's approximately the diagonal of this five and a half by five and a half log or post which is seven and three quarter so this is about a seven and three quarter sphere diameter uh, except like what I said around the edges here. If I had extended the bit out further so that I was cutting a, a radius that's five and, well, five and a half or less, in this case it's almost like five and three eighths, then you would you'd be working towards a sphere, in which case it'd be better to cut this off and work at it from all angles and you'd have to worry about some sort of fixturing method to make sure that it's clampable from any direction. Like say you wanted to router on this face, you'd have to clamp it somewhere, you know, on the back. But yeah, it works. So Mateus Wandel, you're you're wrong, wrong-ish, at least in my case. You can use a little bit of sanding in some spots. But some 60 grit would probably take that down pretty quick. Or maybe even a little bit more time with the router with a fine adjustment of, of the depth. There's a little bit of a a ridge, like a bump right there that could be routed off, and then this this valley here. You can see the the bit marks there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have anything to say about it, leave a comment. If you want to see more of this type of video, hit the subscribe button down there too. And I'll see you around.